Hello everyone, this is Player One, and welcome to the beginning of a short series summarizing the Kingdom Hearts story. Recently, Kingdom Hearts Dark Road got its final update, and this is in preparation of the video of me and Player Two reacting to the final cutscenes. This is one of my favorite series, so I hope I do it justice. I won't be talking about every single detail, but I will be covering the important things. So, hopefully, you enjoy it. Kingdom Hearts 1 begins as a young boy falls into a deep ocean and suddenly arrives on stained glass paintings or stained glass works of art of certain Disney princesses. He hears a voice teaching him how to walk and attack with a sword, a shield, or a staff, depending on what you choose. He encounters the Heartless, strange black creatures. And once you reach the end of said tutorial, you go against the dark side, the first boss, which comes out of his shadow. He wins, but is then swallowed by the creature. This causes him to wake up on Destiny Islands, his home world. The boy is Sora, and with his two friends Kyrie and Riku, they want to get off the island as they feel they want to go explore the outermost reaches of the universe. So they start to build a raft. For a few days, you go out and collect parts, talk to other islanders, uh, Tidus, Selfie, and Waka from respective Final Fantasy games, and just have a good time with your friends. But eventually, he wanders into the secret place, which is in a little cave right at the base of a tree, and encounters a robed figure who he cannot see his face, who tells him that the world has been connected, tied to the darkness. Soon after, he awakes during a rainstorm and finds that the Heartless have invaded the island. So he rushes there and is very worried for his friends. He finds Riku, who reaches out to him and says, I'm not afraid of the darkness. Sora tries to reach to him, but darkness engulfs him. And then, a magic weapon called the Keyblade appears in his hand. And now he can fight the Heartless. He goes to the secret place once more and finds Kyrie. Behind her is a strange door which opens and blasts her towards him. He tries to grab her, but she vanishes in his arms. He then gets blown back into the scene before you now, and fights another dark side. After beating it, he is sucked into the giant dark sphere above, and awakens in Traverse Town, a world where destroyed worlds residents have come to rest. During this time, we see Donald and Goofy and Jiminy Cricket searching for a boy with the key. They are told in a letter by Mickey Mouse at Disney Castle that he has left to go try to solve the problems of worlds disappearing. Sora then meets a few recognizable characters from other Final Fantasies. And then fights the guard armor, the first proper boss, with Donald and Goofy beside him. They team up, 
just go search for Sora's friends and for King Mickey on the Gummy Ship. This then leads us into the world map. They travel to Wonderland, Deep Jungle, Olympus Coliseum, the Hundred Acre Wood, Agrippa, Halloween Town, Monstro, Atlantica, and Neverland, all having good adventures and meeting very fun characters. But eventually, throughout the game, we see cutscenes of Maleficent and her court of villains trying to seize the Princesses of Heart, which are Disney princesses, that will help them open Kingdom Hearts, the heart of all, all worlds. Sora and gang eventually go to Hollow Bastion, which is Maleficent's stronghold. And during there, we see Riku in a strange getup, who apparently has been watching Sora and friends and has gotten a little jealous, and Maleficent has coerced him into the side of darkness. So we have a fight with him, reluctantly. We then see all of the princesses of heart, which include Kairi, and right now Kairi doesn't have her heart, it is somewhere else, so her lifeless body is just with the others. Sora figures out that Kairi's heart is in fact inside him at the very beginning when she vanished into him as he tried to grab her. So, he then uses the Keyblade of Heart, which is made up of the other princesses' hearts, and unlocks Kairi's heart outside of him, which then turns him into a heartless. But don't worry, because immediately after, Kairi then hugs him, which somehow turns him back to normal. We then find that Riku has been possessed by Ansem, the main villain of the game. We've heard about him before, as he was a researcher here in Hollow Bastion, and he left reports scattered across the worlds. But apparently Ansem was the cloaked figure that we saw at Destiny Islands, who had no body. He then possessed Riku, which gave him his body back. After saving Kairi at Hollow Bastion, we take her back to Traverse Town, and she then gives us her good luck charm. A little star made out of seashells, and Soa promises to bring it back to her. We then go to the final world, end of the world, to go and confront Ansem, to stop him from opening Kingdom Hearts. After traversing through the world, we fight Ansem a couple times, and then arrive at the door to Kingdom Hearts. Which then leads us to the final boss, the World of Chaos. As you can see at the top, that is Ansem. And this boss design is one of the coolest in the series. After defeating him, we then start to close the door to Kingdom Hearts, and we find the rat himself on the other side with the keyblade of the dark realm. Riku is also on the other side from having been possessed by Ansem. So Sora and Michael Mouse use their keyblades to close the door with Mickey and Riku on the other side to Sora's dismay. This fixes all of the worlds and brings them back to existence. And Kairi is going on a bit of Destiny Islands, and her and Sora say tearful goodbyes, and he says he'll promise he'll come back for her. This then leads us to a grassy plain where Sora and Donald and Goofy and Jimmy are now planning to go find Riku and the King, and hopefully 
save a few more people in the process. That is Kingdom Hearts 1. I skipped over a few minor things, but again, I'm not covering everything. Please, please play the games on your own time. They're very good. It then leads us into Chain of Memories. It used to be on the Game Boy Advanced, but bundled together with Kingdom Hearts 2, it was Re-Chain of Memories, which is the same game on the PS2. It is sort of the black child of the series, but its story is still very good. And in it, we see many important key characters introduced. Beginning Chain of Memories, we see Sora and Gang in the grassy plains at nighttime, where he encounters a mysterious man in a black coat who says that he will soon lose something precious to him. We then find the gang arriving at Castle Oblivion, a strange world in the middle of what seems to be an abyss. As they enter, the same black coat man arrives and tells them that Castle Oblivion is the place where to lose is to find and to find is to lose. The party realizes that all of their magic and abilities are gone and they have to relearn them. After a few worlds, we meet Axel, not the same black coat man who fights Sora and tells him that a very precious girl is here. That girl is apparently Namine, who Sora does not remember, but has a suspicious feeling that he does in fact know her. A few more floors, and we find Larxene, who we then have another fight with, and during it, a star charm falls out of Sora's pocket, and he finds it very, very familiar, even though he doesn't know where it came from. Sadly, a few more floors, and we find Riku, who is very upset that Sora does not remember their friend Namine. And Riku seems to apparently still be attached to the darkness, to Sora's dismay. A few more floors, and we find Vexen, another member of the strange group, who says that he made Riku the Riku that we have fought a couple of times so far is not Riku and is in fact a replica made by Riku's data. We confront Vexen again in a world called Twilight Town, which he says lies on the other side of Sora's memories. All of the worlds so far have been Sora's memories of worlds that he's been in in the first game, but this world was not in the first game. So he is very confused as to what the other side of his memories mean, and what is this place? We find an old mansion and fight Vexen, but then Axel appears and kills Vexen. He eliminates him. Sora and gang are very confused, because throughout the game, they have been losing their memories of the people close to them 
and their adventures. And so they are all distraught and just want answers to what is going on. Eventually, near the end, we find out that Namine has been altering our memories. And she in fact was never Sora's friend. And she has been placing herself in Kairi's place, trying to eliminate her from his memories. But not because she wants to, because everyone else has been telling her. Which brings us to Marluxia, who was the hooded man at the beginning. He has been trying to betray the group that they work for by eliminating Sora here and now, even though they apparently have a use for him. We go and fight Marluxia. The Riku replica also appears and says that even though his, he himself is fake and his memories are fake, he still wants to protect Namine. And then we fight Marluxia in his final form and end him. Which then brings us to a pod where Namine says she can fix Sora's memories and erase the ones that she made. But that means that Sora will not remember any of the time that he spent in Castle Oblivion. Sadly. Of course, Sora agrees, but he promises to thank her whenever. Which leads to Jiminy writing one thing in the journal that says, Thank Namine. Sora and group go to sleep, which brings us to the other half of the Chain of Memory story. Riku, from the Dark Realm, has somehow arrived at Castle Oblivion and is moving up through the basement floors to try to escape. He encounters Lexius, another member of the group, who he dispatches quickly when he taps into his dark power that he's trying to get rid of. Throughout Riku's story, we hear Mickey's voice trying to reach to us, and Riku trying to ward off the darkness inside him from when Ansem possessed him. Eventually, Mickey does arrive and is physically there at Castle Oblivion to help Riku escape. One of the final floors in Riku's story, he encounters Zexion, the final member of the group introduced in this game. And he beats him too. He doesn't kill him, but he does beat him. Their main goal for Riku, well, they didn't plan for him to be there in the first place, but they did figure that they could have some use for him if they were to beat him, but they never did. On one of the final floors, Riku meets a strange man named Diz, who wants to work with Riku. Riku is very confused and doesn't know what to say, but he agrees to go with the man once he overcomes his darkness. Riku goes to Twilight Town and finds the Riku replica. This is after Sora's story, and the Riku replica is very distraught about who he is, and he wants to be the real Riku. So he challenges Riku to a fight, where the real Riku wins. And the replica accepts his fate to go away into the darkness, even though he was never real so he may not have an afterlife to go to. He is one of the most tragic characters in the whole series. Riku arrives on the final floor, and Ansem appears, and Riku finally decides to fight his darkness once and for all. He beats Ansem, and then arrives at the entrance to Castle Oblivion into the grassy plains. He and Mickey 
don the black coats because they are said to ward off darkness. And Riku says to Diz that he will walk the road to dawn, not light or darkness. He will accept both of them. And that concludes Chain of Memories. While it is the black sheep of the series, the story itself is very good. So, if you can't get past the combat, at least watch the cutscenes if you can. It then leads us to Kingdom Hearts 2, what many people believe to be the best game in the series. And while I do like all of them, Kingdom Hearts 2 definitely is near the top. This will be the majority of the story in this video, because Kingdom Hearts 2 is a long game. But it's worth it. The story in this is very, very good. And it has one of my favorite characters in the series, Roxas. Kingdom Hearts 2 begins with a completely different protagonist. We have Roxas, who is having dreams about Sora for some reason. He is a boy living in Twilight Town, and he's on summer vacation. He goes to the usual spot to hang out with his friends, Hainer, Pence, and Olette. Today, they're having some issues with the delinquents of the town, Cypher and his gang, who are also Final Fantasy characters. They go and fight them, because apparently they stole something from them. But that was actually not true. And the real culprit was a white figure that looks very strange. So Roxas goes and confronts it. And the bat he was using to fight transforms into the Keyblade for some reason. He defeats the enemy, and it destroys itself and becomes the photos that were taken. But the weird thing is, the photos themselves were not only taken, but the word photos could not be said by anyone. They all hang out at the top of the Twilight Town Station clock tower and have ice cream together. During this time, we see Diz talking to a hooded figure in one of the black cloaks, talking about Roxas. We also see Namne, and on the next day, Roxas meets Namine. Time seems to freeze, and she exchanges a few words with Roxas. After this, Roxas then encounters his dive to the heart, and then picks his weapon just like the first game. This ends with him fighting the Twilight Thorn, the first boss and a bigger version of the white creatures from before. He defeats it, and then wakes up on the next day, where there is a struggle tournament. Struggle is a competitive sport that is played in Twilight Town. He goes up against Hainer, Cypher, and Vivi, the black mage in Cypher's game. And Vivi is acting very strange, and after the fight is over, he turns into one of the white figures. Time freezes again, 
and then Axel appears out of nowhere. Now mind you, no one knows that Axel is alive. He faked his death in Chain of Memories. So he arrives and talks to Roxas like he knows him, like they were friends. They have a fight, and then Diz arrives and tries to tell Roxas that Axel is lying. Eventually, time resumes, they are gone, and Roxas continues on with the struggle tournament. They all go to the station to try to go to the beach, but for some reason, the man in the cloak that was with Diz stops them and takes the money they were saving to go on the train. During this scene, Roxas falls off the clock tower and has a sort of telepathic conversation with Kyrie, talking about Sora. We also see that the hooded figure was actually Ansem, who we thought was dead. The next day, Roxas and his friends find the Seven Wonders of Twilight Town, which are all weird things happening in the town, such as a shadow coming out of a waterfall, or a bag moving on its own. The last wonder is inside the old mansion, but no one really wants to go in there. So on the next and final day, Roxas awakes and tries to find everyone, but can't seem to find them. Axel arrives, though, and tries to fight him again, but then time freezes. Roxas hears Diz's voice to come to the mansion, and he does so. During this time, Roxas starts to get more memories about himself. Apparently, he used to work in the same group that Axel is in, and apparently they were friends. Roxas goes into the mansion and goes into a room where Nominate was, and finds all of her drawings about him and Sora, and all of the key events that have happened so far. Roxas then heads down into the basement, which is where Diz was observing him, and he gets all the memories back. He once fought with Riku, who wanted to take him to help Sora, and of course Roxas lost, and is now in this weird, glitchy Twilight Town. Now, of course, Roxas is upset about this, because his life is basically fake. He confronts Axel once more, and Roxas now remembers everything, but Axel is not happy, and they fight again. And Roxas acquires dual-wield keyblades, the Oblivion and the Oathkeeper. He defeats Axel and arrives in the room with the pod from Chain of Memories. Diz talks to him a little bit more and tells Roxas that he's Sora's nobody, a part of Sora that he needs in order to become whole again. Roxas accepts his fate and his summer vacation ends. Sora awakes, and he reunites with Donald, Goofy, and Jiminy. They make their way into Twilight Town, and in front of the station, they find Mickey in one of the black coats. He tells them to board the train and leave town, and gives them a pouch full of money and a blue crystal 
Now the blue crystal was a part of the trophy that Roxas won for the struggle tournament. They board the train and arrive at the mysterious tower. In front of it is Pete, who is hoping to make the leader of the tower, the owner, into a Heartless to help Maleficent. But of course, Sora's like, we've already defeated Maleficent, and that angers Pete a little bit, so he goes and runs away. They, ra- they make it up to the top of the tower and meet Yen Sid, who tells them all about the future journey that they're about to go on. He tells them that the Heartless are still here, and now the new enemy, the Nobodies, which are the white figures. The Heartless are created from a person's heart, and when their heart leaves their body, that leaves behind a Nobody. They then meet the three fairies from Sleeping Beauty, which give Sora new clothes, which is my personal favorite outfit of the whole series. They then head out, and we see Maleficent come back somehow inside the mysterious tower room. The gang head to Hollow Bastion as their first world. The people there have been repairing it since last game, and that includes the old gang from Traverse Town, because Hollow Bastion is actually their home. So they catch up with them, and after an attack from some nobodies, they see the rest of the black hooded figures, which are known as Organization 13. And they tell their plans to make a Kingdom Hearts to get hearts of their own. And they call Sora Roxas, which makes him very confused. This then leads the group to do a couple of worlds, Beast's Castle, Land of Dragons, and Olympus Coliseum. They then head to Disney Castle because... Maleficent is there trying to take over, and she has gone to the past and taken the Cornerstone of Light, which makes Disney Castle uh, safe from attacks. So Sora and the gang go to the past in a world called Timeless River and save the Cornerstone of Light. They then head to some more worlds such as Port Royal and Halloween Town. And they hear that Kairi was sighted in Twilight Town. So they go ahead and go there, but she's already gone. Hainer, Pence, and Olette tell them that they talked to her, but then a man with red hair took her through a portal. They head back to Hollow Bastion because the defense system is acting up, and they want to figure out what's going on with that. They find Ansem's study, which had all his research on the heart and things of that nature, and also his computer, which heads into the Tron world, Space Paranoids. They go there and figure out what is wrong with the defense system, which is the MCP from the Tron movie. They incapacitate it for the moment, and then head back out. And they find this portrait of Ansem, and Mickey shows up there too. And they have a little bit of an exposition talk, because apparently Ansem from the first game is not in fact Ansem, and this man is Ansem the Wise, and Mickey met him before. And he met Ansem in quotation marks. This then heads into the halfway point of the game, where 
there is an influx of Heartless surrounding a place called Villain's Vale, which is Maleficent's hideout. So everyone in the town bands together to try and take out all of the Heartless. Sora gets ready to go into the fray, but then an organization member, Demix, appears, and they have a fight. Sora defeats him, and he... he dies. And we see... Mickey take off his coat, because now he doesn't have to worry about the organization finding him. And they see the leader of Organization 13, Xemnas. Right above the battlefield. And Mickey remembers who he is now. He was, in fact, Xehanort, Ansem's apprentice. And Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness from One, was Xehanort's Heartless, and Xemnas is his nobody. This then leads into the A Thousand Heartless battle, which is one of the coolest parts in the series. After that, Sora is confronted by Saax, another member, who tells him his the whole plan of having Sora defeat Heartless, which then makes a Kingdom Hearts so that all of the organization members can get hearts of their own, because nobodies do not have hearts. So Sora has a, a tiny dilemma about what to do, since he needs to defeat the Heartless but that also helps the organization. He then is brought to a black void, which contains a box that has some ice cream in it, and a photo of Roxas and the Twilight Town game, who Sora, he says this is Roxas, even though he should have no knowledge of him. They then do another round of Disney Worlds, and in one of them, Beast's Castle, he defeats Zaldin, who took the place of Gaston in that world's story. The reason Kingdom Hearts 2 is one of the longer games is because you visit each world twice, and this encapsulates that part of the game. And now we go into the end game. The gang heads to Twilight Town to find out how to get to the organization's hideout. Because Axel said when Sora was confronted by Syax that Kairi was taken by the organization and that Axel wanted to help her. So they go to Twilight Town and they go back to the computer where Diz made the simulated Twilight Town for Roxas. And they find out about the other Twilight Town and gain access to it. And in there, they find a crack that leads to the organization's homeworld. And they arrive in the betwixt and between. A plethora of nobodies shows up and they start to fight, and Axel shows up and helps them, but sadly. Axel does one more big attack, which ends his life, and he tells Sora that Kyrie's in the castle dungeon and that he just wants to see Roxas again. They then head to the world that never was the organization hideout. They come in front of the memory skyscraper, and Sora is taken inside of his heart for a second, and he battles Roxas. A very entertaining fight. And at the end, Roxas has an internal sequence where he talks to Axel and hope they can see each other again. We cut to the castle, and Namine comes out of a dark portal and helps Kairi get out of the prison. They then encounter Ansem, 
who actually is in fact Riku, who now looks like Ansem. And they all get together and start to head out of the castle. During this time, Mickey is going up the castle as well, and he meets Diz, who is in fact Ansem the Wise this whole time. Ansem has a plan to stop the organization's Kingdom Hearts. Sora is climbing up the tower, and he encounters Zigbar, another member, and defeats him. And he sees Kairi and Riku upstairs, and he runs up to them. And so the main group is finally reunited after all this time. There are then two more fights with organization members, Luxord, and then finally Syax. Riku then tells Sora of how he became to look like Ansem. In his fight against Roxas, he let his dark power overflow, and in doing so, it changed his appearance forever. Back to Diz, he has an encoder that wants that he wants to turn Kingdom Hearts into data. But of course, the heart is a complex thing and can't be turned into data. So it explodes, which somehow returns Riku to his proper form and breaks the organization's Kingdom Hearts, stopping their plan. The gang run up to the top of the tower and encounter Xemnas who says that he can just make another. But of course, they aren't having that. And thus begins the final fight. They fight Xemnas, and Roxas and Namine appear in a ghostly form, and accept to be reunited with Sora and Kairi. All the way back, when Sora stabbed himself to release Kairi's heart, and he turned into a Heartless, that in turn made a nobody, one for him and one for Kairi. So, Roxas and Namine become one with Sora and Kairi, even though they should be their own people. Xemnas is not done yet, though. He sends Sora and Riku into one final fight in the realm between. Not the light realm, and not the dark realm. And they finally finish off Xemnas. But that leaves Sora and Riku in the dark realm, with no way back. But suddenly, a door of light appears, and they arrive back at Destiny Islands. Sora returns Kairi's good luck charm, and that ends Kingdom Hearts 2. But of course, that doesn't end the whole game. Sora, Riku, and Kairi then receive a letter from the king saying something we don't know yet but basically that their journey is not over yet that has been part one of the kingdom hearts summary i have been player one and i hope you come back for part two when we cover the handheld era thanks for watching <laughs>